And uh, you know, going back to to one hundred two, actually, we were like mentioned before. Um, you know, at, you know, obviously headlined by uh, you know legends Randy Couture and Antonio Rodrigo Noguera. I was just uh, you know hoping to get your opinion on that fight and how do you see that going? Oh man, uh, that's a hard fight. I, I I'd say I'd have to lean towards Randy. Okay. Uh, you know, but but like people have a puncher's chance. You Noguera know, always has that chance of catching anybody in a submission. You know, so yeah. I, I I would be leaning towards Randy grinding it out and uh, winning by decision. Mm-hmm. But. I mean, I'm not going to be surprised if he gets caught in the submission because if somebody does it, it'd be Noguera. Right. You know? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, uh, Brad, going back to you, uh, you know, like we said before, you're, you know, you're one of the. I don't want to say up and coming welterweights because you've been around the game for a while, but you're definitely making a mark now in the UFC. Is there any one person in the UFC right now that really stands out to you that maybe you want to take on that'll give you that next step? You know, not just to. To be relegated on the main... Anybody main-game. in the top five. There you go. <laughs> Anybody in the top That's five. That's when they asked me. They said it. When they asked me who my next opponent, I said I want somebody in the top five. Okay. You got five people to pick. <laughs> you pick. <laughs> Do you... I, I don't take it personal. It's a sport. And, uh, you know, I'm ready to go. And uh, uh, you can't be one of the best unless you're fighting the best. So I'm not sitting here to fight... I don't want to fight runners, uh, runner ups. I want to fight the man, you know? Yeah. Let's d- see what's up. I think I can beat these guys. You know, nobody's guaranteed anything, but I think I can win. So the only way I can find out is by stepping in there and fighting them. Exactly. So yeah. I want whoever's in the top five, that's who I want to fight. And, you know, just in your own opinion, Brad, who do you see in that top five in the welterweight class in the UFC right now? Uh, Tiago, St. Pierre. Uh, John Fitch, uh, who else? Uh, really top ten, I would be happy, but preferably top five. Right. But anybody in the top ten, I would be happy. I think uh, Dan Hardy jumped in there in the top ten. Uh, Carl Parisian's in there. You know, any any of those guys. For sure. And uh, yeah, I'd rather not fight Tiago because I'm real close to uh, ATT. And I go there and train a lot. But, you know, when you get, you know, eventually it'll probably happen. Mm-hmm. You know, that's probably the only one out of the top ten that I'd, I'd rather not fight because I train there and we're all, you know, really cool. Right. But there's only so many people at the top, so that's probably eventually going to happen, you know. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that <laughs> that's something we actually talked about with Ricardo Loborio uh, a couple months back, being that there's so many... You know, not not only is there so many uh, welterweights in your division, but there's just so many uh, so many uh, ATT guys in in all across uh, divisions that eventually, you know, there's going to be a couple pairings where ATT guys are going to be have to force to be face each other uh, to yeah. break into that top contention. And uh, yeah, you know, do you think that's you know a lot of a lot of people like you know like for example being uh, Leota Machida and Anderson Silva, you know, friends and training partners, yeah. uh, they talked about you know that they would never fight each other. Do you think that's something that uh you know as the sport progresses, that's something that's going to need to change? Being that a lot of guys need to need to you know solidify themselves you know as the best in the world. Yeah, my opinion, Anderson Silva has already solidified himself. Right. You know, he doesn't have to do anything. He don't even need the title. To me, he's like the Michael Jordan of, of our sport. <laughs> and, you know, it really offends me when people, like, boot him before his life. It's like, what are you doing? That's like paying money to go watch a basketball game and Michael Jordan walks in the room and you start booing. Right. I mean, show some respect for how dominant this guy is. I mean, people are making an issue out of his fight being boring. Well, why don't you put somebody in there that can do something about it? Right. I mean, it's pretty bad if he's so dominant, nobody can make him sweat. You don't think that's cool? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty impressive. Yep. No, I agree completely. And, uh, you know, obviously they, the UFC, uh, you know, maybe changed their little their, their schemes around being that they they met, they met paired him up with a guy like, uh, you know, like Forrest Griffin who really uh, – was able to to allow Anderson Silva to display all the skills that maybe people were a little accustomed to. Do you think uh, you know at this point people maybe got a uh, maybe a little spoiled at uh you know maybe all the the K- the KO victories and the submissions that Anderson was racking up in the UFC that that's what they expected every time he fought? Uh, 
Well, I think most American fans don't love the actual sport of mixed martial arts. I think a lot of them still are just watching it, watching it for fights. Right. They want to see blood or knockouts. And they don't enjoy watching the fight and the technique involved. And if they did, that wouldn't be an issue. I think, period, they want blood or knockouts. They're, they're coming to watch fights. And they're not really, you know, showing appreciation for the, the uh, mixed martial arts, for the technique and, and skill involved in it. Right, for sure. You know, I enjoy why all his fights were good to me. Just watching how he works and, and just is dominated and, and just cancels out whatever somebody's trying to do to him. Man, I'm impressed by that. This is one of the top guys in the world, and the guy can't do anything. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where would you, you know? a- where would you actually rank? Uh- in your opinion, uh, Anderson Silva and uh, the pound for pound list. A lot of people say, you know, you got GSP obviously in there, Fedor. No, no, no. I don't think GSP. I think GSP is the best welterweight. Yeah. For sure. But I don't think he's nearly as uh, dominant as Anderson Silva is. I think. I think, it, in my opinion, I think Anderson Silva is proven time and time again that he is the most dominant pound-for-pound fighter. Dan Henderson made him sweat one round. Yep. And that's the only competition he's had, you know, in a long time. Uh, I think Leota Machito's after that, and then I think Fade Pierre, and then going off the performances, and then I think Fedor. Right. I think Fedor is the most dominant heavyweight, but I don't think he's the most dominant, you know, like dominant fighter. I think he's just... He's won, but like when he's fighting Olowski, I think if Olowski fought that fight right and smart, I think he would have picked him apart and won it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's been the general consensus, uh, you know, especially after, uh, you know, Arlovsky hasn't really proven to have the greatest chin in the world. And, uh, you know, that's that, you know, that's actually something that um, Dana White's actually spoke about before. I mean, that uh, a lot of people expected after Affliction went under that, you know, a lot of the guys that were transferred over here, um, they expected maybe like an Arlovsky to come back. But, uh, you know, he hasn't it, nothing's really materialized. But, um, you know, going back to, you know, something I, I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I know you grew up in a. You know, when you first began, you know, any real uh, combat sport, it was being, uh, you know, uh, I believe from a boxing background. You know, what do you, how do you feel about uh, MMA and boxing mixing together? And do you think they can coexist, or do you think those are two sports that that should <laughs> remain mean, separated? It does now. What's that? Look at most fights, man. These people are boxing. Yep. I mean, uh, I don't think a boxer can fight MMA and be successful. Mm-hmm. I think if if he learns MMA. He can use his boxing skills. I think if a wrestler has, like, like I did the stand up because of my wrestling now. Yeah. You know, and um, because I'm a wrestler, I, I am able to apply my boxing. Right. Because I have confidence in, in my wrestling. But if you can't wrestle, you can forget about it. You know? If you can't wrestle and you're fighting me, I'm going to take you down. That's my easiest route to win the fight. Yeah. You know, so I, no, a boxer cannot stand to uh, MMA fighters. But, um, you know, if they want to train and learn how to be an MMA fighter, then they'll be able to use uh, the skills that they have. But you can't jump from a boxing ring into an MMA ring. You get smashed. For sure. Well, you know, actually, um, uh, being that one fight in particular, saying that to me when you say something like that, being. Uh, you know the Ray Mercer Tim Sylvia fight. Um, you know t- uh, a lot of people, I guess, thought. Uh, you know Tim was kind of, I guess, trying to use the name of Ray Mercer to rebuild himself in in, uh, in MMA. Um, the fight was originally supposed to be contested in um, under boxing rules. Uh, at the end, I, I guess it, they changed over to to mixed martial arts rules. Uh, what were your feelings on that matchup being put together? And did you expect the, you know the, the result to happen, being that Tim Sylvia being knocked out as quickly as he did? Or if Tim Silver tried to prove something. I mean, uh, uh, you know, anybody with knockout power like that can do that. And Ray Mercer is proven to be a really hard hitter. But, I mean, he's not going to consistently beat top guys, you know? Yeah. I mean, he got the puncher's chance like anybody else. And if, if, if I feel like Tim Silver was coming in there to box a boxer with MMA gloves. 